A unique advantage of using TEM is that you can obtain both an image and the corresponding diffraction pattern. The bright field or dark field TEM image gives you the microstructural information. The diffraction pattern offers the crystallographic information. In this video, we'll briefly discuss the parallel beam diffraction patterns of the single crystalline, nanocrystalline, and amorphous materials. I'd like to make one note here. The title of this video is Parallel Beam Diffraction. Parallel is comparative. It's just a lot less convergent compared to the convergent beam diffraction. In TEM, there's no absolute parallel beam diffraction. Towards the end of the video, we will also touch upon the double diffraction and precession electron diffraction. You have seen this slide before. So for single crystals, the diffraction pattern are spots. For nanocrystalline materials, the diffraction patterns are sharp rings. For the amorphous materials, the diffraction pattern are the diffuse rings. Why it is the case? Let's look at them one by one. Starting from the single crystals. From the previous videos, you have learned that because the wavelength of the electron beam is very small, so to satisfy the Bragg's law, the angle theta is very small. What this tells you is that when the lattice planes are more or less parallel to the electron beam, they will undergo Bragg's diffraction. Using the 110 set of planes as an example, it will give rise to the 110 spot. If we draw a G vector from the direct beam to the diffracted beam, it will be the plane normal. In general, any G vector you draw in the diffraction pattern, the G vector is the plane normal of that set of planes. Moving on to the nanocrystalline materials, the diffraction pattern is simply the summation of the diffraction pattern of individual grains in the area of interest. In the super simplified example on the left, assume all grains have the same 001 out of plane orientation but the different in plane orientations. This is the orientation of grain A, and that's the corresponding diffraction pattern. This is grain B, and its diffraction pattern, then grain C, and the diffraction pattern. Because all the grains they have the same 001 interplanar spacing. The 001 here is a family of planes instead of specific planes. The distance from the direct beam to the diffracted beam of this set of planes are the same. They lie on the circle. If we have more grains, the circle will become more and more complete. Let's look at a couple of examples from the textbook. You can see the diffraction rings on the left are more discrete, while the one on the right are more continuous. If the size of the SA aperture, the selected area aperture, is the same, one could conclude that the specimen on the right has finer grains. Moving on to amorphous materials. In amorphous materials, you also can get diffraction information. You see diffuse rings. You do not see diffraction spots because there's no long range order, but you see diffuse rings because there is short range order. On the right, the graph shows the radial distribution function of amorphous silica. The position of the rings are not random. They correspond to the atomic spacing for silicon, silicon, silicon oxygen, and oxygen, oxygen. Before wrapping up today's video, I want to briefly talk about double diffraction and precession electron diffraction. Very important, double diffraction is not the same as plural scattering in the dynamical approximation. In double diffraction, the diffracted beam is diffracted by different sets of planes. This can happen within the same crystal or when it passes into a second crystal. In contrast, for the plural scattering in the dynamical approximation, the electron beam is getting scattered multiple times by the same set of planes. In double diffraction, if the initial diffraction vector is G1, then redifracted by G2, the resultant G vector is G1 minus G2. Double diffraction is very common in two-phase materials that exhibit epitaxy. 
In the example here, you have the iron oxide nanoparticles growing on the aluminum oxide substrate. The electron beam has to go through the iron oxide as well as the aluminum oxide. The result is the satellite spots you see in the diffraction pattern. Precession electron diffraction, PED, is a technique we have in our lab. During PED, the beam actually processes or rocks to form a cone. The main advantage of using PED is to remove the dynamical effect and the extra spots which are supposed to be forbidden. Thus, it will give you high quality kinematical data. In the example shown here, with a small angle of precession, you still see some of the forbidden reflection from the dynamical effect. With a larger angle, you don't see these spots anymore. In the next video, we'll go a bit deeper in the single crystal diffraction by learning how to index those diffraction patterns, and we'll also discuss the stereographic projection.